and welcome into Dental Profits. I am so excited. As you can tell, these guys are not even paying attention. This is going to be a great show. The Millennial millennial Dentist Podcast. These guys are going to be a blast. Stay with us. Hi, folks. I'm Sean Crabtree. And I'm Cameron Bailey. We don't want to change the way you do business. We want to change the way you're thinking about your business. We want you to have better results, happier clients, and make more money. Let's get it started. Welcome into Dental Profits, the podcast that is all about you having happier clients, better results, making more money, and enjoying the ride. And I'm so happy to have two guests. Uh, you already know them. They're from the Millennial Dentist podcast, Sully Sullivan and Payman, who goes yes. by PayPay. Pay Pay Raz. Pay Raz. Whatever it is. P Wizzy, baby. P Wiz. We are we, so pumped to join you. Dude. Thank you yeah, for having man. us, man. This is fantastic. Listen, I love the you, background. Listen, you guys were a blast, and and it's so cool too that uh, I mean we're right here, in in uh, you know we're basically Music an hour City. from you guys, which is even better. You guys have a very interesting story, and the reason that I was so excited about having you here is not only because of what you do as the Millennial Dentist Podcast, but you guys have some interesting stories, and I think you have some really interesting. Um, backgrounds that you can share as you guys know i mean we've got we've got uh everybody from millennial to all the way at the end of their career whatever age that might be and and one of the things i mean Sully, you specifically uh you're a fourth generation dentist correct it's crazy i am yeah fourth generation dentist uh you speak you're an author you got the podcast going payment Interesting scenario, but different scenario uh, coming from a background of medical, right? Well, my yeah, most of the, everybody in my family are all medical doctors, and then but I you wised up. To, I I was the smart <laughs> one. Smart one. <laughs> <laughs> What is weak? So. I'm the one who always. Uh, well, actually, I feel like I'm the one who works the hardest right now. Looking at the way that their schedule yeah, is, but you're probably making the most money though. But yeah, I think I think uh, ultimately they all agree to where dentistry right now. Gosh, yesterday I think I, I read somewhere that for 2018 is the top. Was it the second job um, or the top two? It top was. It yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, I mean, that's that's coming a long way away because 20 years ago. When I started this, you know what the headline was, right? It's the number one suicide rate. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Our way, baby. No, that's that a true funny. story. That man. is so true, though. It yeah. was the number one suicide job, most suicide. And now it's the number one and number two job to have uh, in the nation. All right, so let's back up. First of all, for the listeners and the viewers here, how did you guys meet? And tell us about all this. Honestly, it's pretty crazy. Um, so we went to the same school. We both I went figured to that's where you were going to go. Well, yeah. I mean, you got you got a southern white boy, a Persian over here, <laughs> kicking it. It's, it's a little, it is interesting. No, we, um, you know, we had known each other in dental school, and um, we both like to have a good time and whatnot. But we we were we we were we were close, but we weren't like we didn't hang out and that sort of thing. He was a year above me. Um, we had a lot of good mutual friends. And then when, when, when we, when I graduated, payment was already out working and I started seeing all his stuff and was frankly blown away because for those of you who don't, haven't seen his stuff, it's the most, he's one of the most talented implantologists I know. And, um, and so we, we kind of, I got this idea that, cause I was like, Hey, you know, what do we all do when we graduate? We sit around, we drink beer, we talk about dentistry, we try to solve the world's <laughs> problems, right? So I was like, we should just start recording this. So I was like, the reality is, is I'm not that cool. Um, you know, it's probably not really fun if it's just me on the podcast. So um, I, I reached out to two buddies, Daniel Holsinger, who's he's actually not doing it as much anymore because he's moved to Chattanooga. He's a pediatric dentist. And, and I was like, Payment would be a fantastic person to have as like as a co-host to be a part of this thing, just because what he's doing is so unique, um, and and just he brings a different perspective. Because here I am, you know, having this like dental family to a degree, which is cool and has its own unique stuff. But at the same time, Payment's the complete opposite. I mean, he came from no background, corporate dentistry, startup world to you know blown out of the water. So that's really kind of how we 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 connected was through. Through the pot, through both of us had an wanted to or a desire to kind of pass on or you know influence or however you want to call it to yeah. help our our, a, our fellow yeah, colleagues. We, have, we always had this sense of uh, blessing, or I guess we were both feeling like lucky um, the way that our situations turned out. Because um, frankly, I feel like we are 
some of the if we had to pick 10 20 per top 20 percent our class i feel like we are one of them uh, both of us in our own class respecting but at, at the same time we wanted to give this same thing back to a lot of younger generation like young young folks in dental school i never thought this is going to really turn out to be as popular <laughs> yeah, as we, we, we didn't and think it, it would work <laughs> and, and i didn't know but it's honestly it props to solely because i didn't know how because there's it takes so much time and you know sean how much this whole podcast, I had no idea. But yeah. when he started it, a lot it, of work, yeah. And and yes, and he's been putting so much time and effort. And I'm like, man, this is very self, um, selfless of him because it's it, we don't get paid for it, right? We right. don't really get paid. And uh, but uh, the opportunity is amazing when we get stories back from a lot of folks turning and ma- messaging us, you uh, know, how much we've motivated them or how much they That's wanted awesome. also kind of um, kind of well, do the same thing that we're doing. And I mean, our motto is our motto is work smarter, not harder, right? I mean, like I want to do less, make more, live the dream, go on vacations, and and so I think that's we both try to kind of embody that. I mean, we both mm-hmm. we both spend a lot of money on CE, you know, we we work really hard when we're grinding, but at the same time, we want to provide and kind of show a other people that look, you can you do can work. have your cake and eat it too, to a degree. Like you don't have to, you know be this generation that grinds it out and doesn't get to enjoy that and do a, you know, why not? Why not? So, so you guys do have that. And I didn't read that, but that is, that is, uh, that is your mantra, right? Uh, work smarter, not harder. It's interesting because our mantra is, um, uh, work smarter and play harder. And that's, that is, that is our mantra here at the Crabtree group. But yeah, no, I mean, you guys are having a blast payment. Tell me, I mean, because Sully was filling us, and filling me in a little bit, uh, he and I were talking, you know, while we were waiting on you to make it in three to five minutes. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they this turned is into how like it started. 25. Let me give you a little background about. So you so came from corporate, right? Right. So this is how it goes right now. But in right out of school. school into corporate. Correct? Uh, right. From out of school. Yeah. From okay. out of school. So pretty much what is happening right now, not just me, but the situation. I mean, we were in school. Lunch and learn is where dental right. students are learning about these corporates sure. in Aspen sure. and Hartman. And they and we would get pizzas and we would get all kinds of food. And that was, frankly, the only reason we would go. Like, we would go, oh, let's go free lunch, free lunch. And then... <laughs> And that kind of got me. And the corporate ones, they threw good lunches. Like they would get like right. payway or, you know, it wasn't just Chick fil A and pizza. It, it turned- In Memphis, see, they gave us good barbecue. Oh, yeah, we had good barbecue, yep. man. Central. I uh, yeah, I used to do some like- of that speaking. Yeah. And, and some of the guys, I was like, some of the guys okay, in the back room were like, yeah. <laughs> Crafty <laughs> Root Classic. Yeah. <laughs> No, go ahead, I was like, I knew, I knew, okay, so I don't have a dad or parents or any uncle or nobody or even a friend. Um, I mean, I had shadowed people in high school and college. I worked for an oral surgeon, but ne- no, nobody to where I'll be like, okay, let me come and take over your practice and you sell it or I take over. I was late in that game. Now, what happened was all I knew was like, okay, corporates, right? Right. Um, I started looking around Nashville, Heartland, and Aspen, and all of these folks. At the same time, I had some uh, contract in Oregon, Eugene, and then also Vegas. I wanted to just kind of get away from Nashville for a little bit and then come back. However, when what happened was three days following graduation, my aunt was at Affordable Dentures, and she wanted me to go and check with the denture to make sure that they're adjusting it right and they're doing the right thing and i'm like i don't know anything about denture. can you imagine that the, the dentist that was doing this denture when the fourth year student comes in and says can i see that please <laughs> so they're like what are you what are you here for i was like i'm just carrying on with my hands checking out just checking out and they're like well you were in school i was like yeah i actually just graduated friday this was monday i've done three dentures and i yeah, yeah. and i didn't even do them yeah, well, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> but anyway, so I was like, man, I can I um you all have any openings? They're like, yeah. Do you want to work? And I was like, sure, cuz at that time I was ready to sign all these contracts. I mean, one of them and the one I was very close to was Eugene, Oregon. It was um Advantage Dental or something that was going to pay me 160 first year, 170 third a second year and then 180 third year. So that was a 3-year contract. And I was like, well, that's good. I'll just take that, go to Oregon, Eugene. Um, and then eventually, well, that's uh, a big difference. From this, that's, a, that's a I big know. Difference. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's got some different. So in the mix of all of this, they asked me to go. I'll go in. I ended up working a week after graduation as a dental assistant because I didn't even have my diploma ready. Then a week later, the practice owner unfortunately got sick to where now I came from the dental student to now almost to be running this office. That's $2.3 million. And then long story short, we made it from $2.3 million to $4 million without the practice owner being there. And then it was good to... Awesome. It was not really me. It was just the team and the, the manager, um, office manager, Melinda. Who are you, man? You were pretty good. That's your, your yeah, but at the same life. time, I feel like, man, he was sold for me before I walk in. I'm like, Jesus. Well, Christ. and that's the key, right? I mean, yeah. it's all about the team approach. And at the end of the yeah. day, if the team has it set up, then you get to knock it out of the park and it's no big deal. Exactly. I think that's a problem, though, with a lot of dentists is, is too many. I think too many dentists are such control freaks that they're they're not willing to delegate the stuff to better people. You know, like like, for instance, she was phenomenal at true, not necessarily, not true. She would give me like she was phenomenal at converting and closing yeah. cases to where you just walked in and said, yes, I can do the procedure. Yes. That's like we try good. to like, we get, we get this shelf of models out, right? <laughs> start fiddling around with models, <laughs> talking right. about megapascals. <laughs> no. And I mean, there's this, you know, I mean, you guys see it. Some, some, some guys have this idea that the quality of care is directly related to how much time the doctor spends sure. explaining all of that rather than, you know, having a quality team that, uh, that sets it up. So you guys went from, uh, from 2.3 to 4. 2.3 million to $4 million with um, two and a half doctors. Well, two doctors, okay. one was doing a surgery and then me doing mostly implant stuff. But it was that we became number one as far as how many implants. I was doing about 80 to 85 implants a month on average. Wow. That's, well, I mean, we were throwing it in there. <laughs> so that's where you that's where you really <laughs> So that's where you really got off on the implants. That's where you well, really. Well, that's how it was awesome because now I went, I used to go to courses, come back and then throw implants, come back and then learn more and then go back and ask more. So it got to a point where it was just kind of very, very, um, almost like a residency, but also get paid for it more than residency. Awesome. Well, I don't know. Some residents, you don't even get paid, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so then you, so, th so then you left that and started your own gig. Right. So then I was, uh, I got closer and closer to the top tier as far as the executives and the CEO and CFOs to where I was now supposed to take over the practice and they were going to do this and this. And, and <clears throat> unfortunately that uh, with four reasons that I can't even say, it didn't turn out to go the whole negotiations with the sure. practice in Nashville. And at that time, I didn't really want to go anywhere but Nashville. So then I was like, okay, well, forget it. Let me just build from scratch. Because at that time, there was no really good practices for sale. Then that's when I started looking for this whole science of finding out what to do and how to open up a building, a dental, um, a dental office, to which I felt like I've got like five years older just <laughs> going through that. No, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of headache there. So you've been in solo practice now for how long? Two years, well, a year, year and a half now. Oh, it's been yeah. a year and a half? Well, a year and three months. I guess it has been. Oh, my gosh. Year, year so, months. year and three months, and you're strictly, Sully was telling me, strictly in plan. I was. I was the first six to eight months, and then I started looking at um, people's Instagram pages. They were posting teeth pictures. <laughs> I was like, I'm missing teeth. So, then I started <laughs> taking some CEs on to, let, let me learn this whole crown prep. Let me see what's the near prep. Like, things that I felt like in dental school, they covered, but maybe a day or two. Like, no, I didn't really I understand. Yeah, right. So, then I started reading books and going to CEs, and I started playing around with crowns and veneers to where... Now I don't have to pull everything out. Let's mm -hmm. just save some of these good ones and then let's pull out the ones that are dirty and then yeah. <laughs> start over. <laughs> so it's been good. I actually, it's funny because I've been made, I've been making a lot more now that I'm saving. Like, yeah, yeah meaning, saving teeth. Yeah, saving teeth. It's working Versus out. Versus just pulling them all and <laughs> putting it in. Well, I tell you, I tell patients that it costs more money to save your teeth. And they're down, especially people from Nashville, Brentwood. <laughs> Keep their teeth, man. People don't want to lose their teeth as quickly, especially now they're like tomorrow. I have a 35-year-old that came into me for all on four, and that's what he wanted. Awesome. And he's 34, 35. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, no matter what type of implants I put in, I mean. Are they going to make it 50 years? Yeah, you're going to be 50, I mean, in 30 years and then or 20 years and then. 
why don't we try to save them? And he's like, well, you're the first one who told me that because everybody's giving me $30,000 or $40,000. I'm like, well, no, you, you got good teeth. <laughs> These are good. So good. I think right now, and unfortunately, um, there's going to be a time where most of the implants that we're doing is going to be redoing a lot of these. And now it's going to come down to, do we have enough bone for these folks or there's nothing no. left? So, so, so let me no. ask you this. So Payman, let me ask you this. And then I want to move to Sully. So Payman, you, you came from the corporate environment. Why do you think, why do you think, um, why do you think most guys choose that route? Other than the, other than the lunch and learn and the pizza, right? Oh, for the corporate? Yeah. Because man, they have it down to the numbers. They were so smart. And I say it and I love it because they do it such a great job on making things and breaking them down to where A to B to C to D. Now, if you didn't do D, there's a reason for that because you didn't follow C. Like right. then you go back to be like everything is trackable. The accounting is trackable. The marketing is trackable. Now, yes, you can say, oh, their marketing sucks or this does not good. But for the most part, most of these corporates right now, at the end of the day, they have a system and they have this protocol where now if you are a solo practitioner like me, if I wanted to replicate or copy this uh, type of corporate ship, it takes a lot of money for me to pay this marketing team. It takes money for me to pay the accounting. It so what's going to happen is I'm going to be doing what do you a think lot they, of What do you think they spend a month on marketing? I told them, I asked yesterday, actually, one of the corporates, I asked how much money, tell me an average, and they don't give you numbers, right? Because yeah. these are all hidden. So that's another fascinating thing about the corporates. What do you mean they're hidden? They, what do you mean they're hidden? They're hidden. So there are fees that- Oh, hidden. Think, I'm sorry. Hidden. I didn't get yeah, you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. they're, they're hidden. <laughs> hidden. <laughs> my yeah. Hey, it's not my fault. He's got me some we Jack. Just, we put subtitles <laughs> <laughs> on our, our podcast. <laughs> You guys are we're drinking Jack Daniels, right? Okay, so we're about to go off the rails. No, but I no, I know what you're saying. I mean, at the end of the day, um, corporate is a business. They have a business model. They have a scalable, repeatable model. Here's the thing, and Sully and I was talking about this. Uh, if you are a solo practitioner, and I hope you're, if you're, you're listening to this right now, you're watching this, and you're a solo practitioner, which most everybody is at this moment, um, you can do all of that. You can do all of that and you can compete with that. But what you cannot compete on is price and what you cannot compete on because their pockets are deep. You cannot beat these guys. Um, you know, not that you're competing against them, but at the end of the day, you're not going to beat those guys on price. But that team approach that you're talking about, um, I mean, listen, that is, you know, that is repeatable, that is consistent, and what that do you is doable. think about this whole, uh, like, it's a good point you brought up, and I want to continue on that rail of saying, you said the, their pockets are deep, but right now I'm seeing a lot of private offices that are getting together and getting these buyers group sort yep. of thing. And I'm like, they're buying things on a volume, but it's a bunch of them. How, what is... But I think to some degree, that's how you have to compete because you either, I think you want to see more group practice. And when we look at medicine, that's how they did. They went to, I mean, I think that's been the most interesting aspect of working with my dad and being a partnership is our overhead went from like 65, 70% to 50%. You so know, let's talk about that, Sully. So you went a different route. You didn't go corporate. Right. You're a fourth generation dentist, which I think is worth. It's cool. Applauding. It is cool. I mean, that is very, very cool. Fourth generation dentist. And you get to work with your dad, which to me is, is an even bigger part of the American dream. I think that is so cool. Uh, your dad's got a legacy. You get to work in it. And I mean, truth of the matter is you've been doing this three years. You guys doubled the practice in 24 months, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and so, it, you know, it, 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 <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Cool. You know, it's, it is cool because he was a really successful practice to begin with. I mean, he was doing 1.4, 1.3, 1, you know, million to begin with. And we'll, we'll clear 3 million this year. Awesome. You know, and, and, and I think what, I mean, look, it's, it's very easy for me to say, we had advantages that most people don't have. I mean, obviously we look alike, we talk alike. That's there's, there's tons of impact there that helps. I'm not going to deny that. I mean, let me be the first to say that I have had more than a head start because of that. But I'll tell you the big things that we did that I think most people miss or don't do is we didn't compete with each other. Um, out of the gate, I was trying to figure out, okay, what does dad not do? You know, he did no adult ortho. He did no soft tissue grafting. He was doing no implants. He was doing um, no sleep. 
you know, so our thing was, okay. So you can, took all that over. Yeah. So I was like, well, crap, <laughs> let him do the fillings. That's fine. <laughs> he can slave away doing that. So you're doing sleep. You're doing- yeah. Oh gosh. We did, uh, we made over a hundred appliances last year. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. And sleep's one of the coolest things. I think if, if you're not doing sleep, I would encourage you right now to start Monday morning asking your patients if they're wearing CPAP and you can do, I mean, we did, we did a quarter million dollars in sleep last year and it was my first year to do sleep. I mean, it's, and that's from our own practice, not building any referrals. I mean, to me, sleep is, sleep is cool because whether you're listening to this and you're 60 years old, okay. And you may be thinking, okay, well, I'm going to turn the phase back. What's better than making money talking, consulting, you know, I mean, sleep is totally team driven. You know, I, I don't remember the last time I scanned for an impression for you know what it is. I'm going to tell you this. This is so true because dentists are the only profession that we don't get paid for talking or no. consulting. So when now right. we're doing something that is out of real, meaning like sleep stuff, you're like, wait, you get paid. This it's phenomenal. Don't know. And that's what I've realized because look at how much we give. Like if you look at our write offs at the end of the year oh. and see how much work we've right. done for that's free. Right. How many right. professions well, and you're not do coding that? out all the and you're not the even coding exams. out the secondary and yeah. all of that. So right, right, I right. think sleep is is going to provide that so, opportunity for a well, lot and, of and not even look, let's go beyond the let's go beyond the ROI of sleep. I mean, sleep treating sleep apnea took my dad's average heart rate from 82 beats per minute at night to 60 beats per minute. I mean, my dad gained 20 beats per minute. Wow. At, you know that's crazy it's crazy wow. it is i mean wow. you talk about you talk about that's adding years to his life and so yeah. like, I, I mean that's what's so cool about sleep is you don't have to it's profitable it's fun and it i mean we get more testimonials more reviews from the from the sleep. sleep stuff so yeah so i get so ticked off at, at young dentists when they go into associateships because because i think i'm a big believer that um i i love the associateship model I really do. I think that I think that's the best benefit. I think that it's really hard to do a scratch start like he did. I think it's really I think the best model can be the associateship that transitions either into partner or buying out the doctor and then working back. And what I see too why much Why do you think that's going away? Or 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 why do you think that's why do you think most think, people choose You know, I think it's I think it's twofold. I think I think in one degree the the senior dentist, I don't like to call them the older dentist. That, that <laughs> them. The senior dentist, I think one, um, doesn't necessarily know the reason for why they're bringing in an associate. And in the short term, it can be profitable for them. And then it's easy to worry about. I think they get to where they like that and they, they're scared to let a piece of the pie go. Mm-hmm. Um, what my dad would tell you is that he's making more money now than he ever did because of what happened to the overhead. You know, He's working less, but making more yeah. money because you're getting a better percentage of what you're doing. The problem becomes if you don't let the associate get some of that pie, well, screw it. I'm out of here, right? Like, why would I? So I think that's part of it is it, I think they last too long too. You know, I think it should be a quicker dating period and it either works or it doesn't. And then we let them start to, to, to transition. Um, you know, that's and some of it is also misfits too, though. Like, oh, between the, like not the philosophy. Not the, yeah. The philosophy is different. Like some people, I mean, think about it. When we got out of school, our mind was just so filled with, I guess nothing. But now to where at least right now, if I, for example, if I hired an associate, because it's funny because right now I'm even going back and forth where I part-time associate. I'm like, shoot, the way that he prepped it, I'm looking at it and I'm getting anal. I'm like, oh, I could have polished that margin a little bit better. Right? Like when I think it comes down to at the end of the day, or whoever the dentist is going to come out out of school or whether or not this um, senior or seasoned dentist, it's one thing I feel like is happening is with the technology and how things are moving so fast in the world of dentistry. They're also becoming a little bit more excited <clears throat> to where they don't want to let the, this office. Now they're find, finding out, oh, wow, I could use CERAC and I could do this thing that I used to cast and do this and use lab and they're going through this whole PTSD, like how much I had to do for this price versus now. So I think a lot of it is also transformation within the world of dentistry and how, because I don't think right now any any 
profession is growing as fast as digital yeah. world and it's 3D changing. printing. And I can tell you guys, the, the biggest challenge I see when it comes to the model is, and you guys have all heard the stats. I can tell you from my perspective, after doing this from Vancouver to Barbados and from the Bahamas to the Great Lakes, here's what I've learned. About 90% of the time, the doctors who get associates get it for the wrong reasons. Right. They're, they're not yeah. prepared. They, and I run into it all the time. Um, you know, somebody will get or will, will, will refer me because, hey, you know, you know, so and so is looking for a, an associate. Who do you know? What are you looking for an associate? Well, I want to cut back. So, what do you want to cut back to? I'd like to cut back to two days. What's your overhead? 80%. Right. Okay. So are you going to be able to afford to take that cut? And are you going to be able to handle that? And, and, and they've not thought their way through all of that, but they have these big ideas and the young associate is sold on all these promises that ultimately on the back end, a lot of times, not because anybody has a bad intention, but they're not being able to be delivered. And then the thing goes south. Um, yeah. and, and not for, but, but many reasons just like that. I think, I think people are not prepared for the proper most of the senior doctors are not really clear about what it looks like and what they want and what they're willing to sacrifice. And then at the end of the day, if their overhead is not where it needs to be and they're paying an associate, let's say 35%, they got 20% overhead, they're cutting back 50%. That, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And then they start resenting that, right? And then the whole relationship goes south. They're not even looking at each other like you're talking about you and your dad. You guys are looking at this like... He's over here. I could be over here. We could take this thing up there, right? Right. It's, yeah. not, it's not looked at like that at all. That's a, that's a really good point. I think young dentists come out of the gate and they want to do flashy procedures. So you could say that. Wait. Well, I can. I, I think that we come out and I think that we want to do implant. We, we want to do too much of the cool stuff. And we don't we don't appreciate really the putting wisdom. Much time. Yeah, We're we don't really want putting much. We don't want to put in the stripes, the sweat. Right. We don't want to pay for the CE. We don't because want to. We, you know, we, we know uh, that we make an excuse of oh my over or our student loans and then this and that is gonna. But the way that we're looking at it is honestly, I there have been months that I didn't make money because I took so much CE, and what is that doing right now for me is making me more money, but down the long term because I'm looking at it. I'm living in another 10 years. Like I want to make sure that I'm stable within the next 10, five years. And a lot of the folks that get out of school, they are have that mentality of the next year or this, oh, I have to pay this much. And I think most of it, we already and have. And a, a lot of times they see dollars. I mean, let's face it. They're, they're looking oh, yeah. at the dollars, dollars right also, out of the shoot. Yeah. We had some good episodes with Soli brought a lot of good folks with talking about financial planning yeah. and getting the uh, student loans figured out. Like, do we want to pay it off or let it just hang in there? And do, <laughs> right. like, right. we, we, we have a lot of. <laughs> so, so wait, wait, let me ask you guys this. Okay, so. How many friends, just count them up, do you guys have that have been or are still in? How many guys that you still keep in touch with from dental school or that you've met at other dental schools through friends or whatever? How many guys your age do you know personally, is a way to ask this, that are in corporate dentistry or have been in corporate dentistry? That's the first question. Oh, probably a well. dozen. Probably, dozen. probably, I'd probably say it's 15 to 20%. Out, out of all of the young dentists that you know, what percentage went corporate that you I know? I feel like it's more than that. Really? To me, I feel like most of, yeah. And now if I'm you had thinking, to throw a percentage on it. I have a people that are. Yeah, <laughs> no, would no, you no, say 50, 50%? I would Probably. say, yeah, I would say 50%. Half of them to be. But, but my problem with that, though, Jean, is that they don't, again, it goes back to your idea of the flashy dollar signs. It right. doesn't make sense, right? If you graduate with $350,000 in loans, taking a job that only gives you $150,000 doesn't make financial sense. So like the math doesn't work. So that's what pisses me off is like, they'll, they'll go out and like, I, ah, you know, they're, they're going to give me this much money. I can make my payment. Like don't think like that. So that, that frustrates me too, yeah. is that I think that w they don't, we don't think big enough. We think we have very narrow vision. I think the people that end up going to corporate, it's a very, it's a very short term view, not a long term. view. Well, that was going to be my next question because I, 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 Agree with everything you're saying, but let's establish a percentage though. With all the guys that you know, what percentage would you say went the corporate route? Just I'll say whatever. one in four. I would say more than one, one in four. four. One in three? 
One in three, more like it. <clears throat> one in three, so a third. I would say one in three. Well, the thing is also you got to realize demographics. Are we talking, for example, in the South, like UT, University of Tennessee, most of our classmates are from the South. We, right. we don't really get much from out of the state, more than maybe 10, 15, and there, most of them are even Arkansas. So looking at national average, I think – it's a lot more than Tennessee you think average. It's probably 50%. So right, right now, the, when I'm talking 50, 60, I'm looking at because me and Soli, we've been around a lot more than our classmates seeing other schools, and I'm noticing their schools are way more. And talking to the recent graduates from coming out of school, there are a lot more corporate how driven many, than our. How many national. dentists are retiring a year? You know, um, I don't know the answer to that, but I just like you and I were talking a moment ago. Um, I was just speaking in Kansas City not long ago, and I did some research on some of this stuff, okay? The median age of, the, of, of dentists in the U.S. is 51. Okay, so, so if you think about the population as a whole, it kind of holds true also for dentistry, right? Sure. So the majority of the guys are on the retiring end. And you guys know this, the stats, the guy I was talking to, by the way, my, my, uh, yeah, my business there partner. He is. Cameron Bailey, the one who has all the all the uh, good Get looks. In What's and, up, killers? And the cool Dude, guys. Rock and roll, man. But, but pull up a chair, man. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I was talking to him a while ago. He was he was freezing in. Um. But so so here's the thing. Though dental schools are graduating more and more and more than they have in the most recent years, they're still not back to where it was oh, yeah. back in the '70s. So if you you know more and more retiring. Uh, you know, there are fewer that are graduating historically than they are right now. I mean, it's a great time to be in dentistry, but there's another stat that I ran into is, and you and I were talking about this, Cameron and I were just talking about this in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. I mean, the latest stat, I don't know if that was 15 or, or 17 or when it was, but 40 is 40, 50, 50 no, percent. 40 is 40 to 50 percent of all dental practices will be corporately owned by, by 2020. 2020. That's crazy. Yeah. By 2020. Totally. Guys, that's two years. That's like a year and a half, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, it's going I mean, crazy. And, and so here's my next question, though. You guys are younger than we are, all right? And a lot cooler, obviously, except for him. <laughs> um, what If you think about those guys that have gone to dentist, to corporate dentistry, I'm curious to know how many of them are going to be like you guys. And See, they're going to get a taste of that, <laughs> and they're going to get away from that, and they're going to go, it's a trap, I want though, to do too. my own thing, and I've learned be a, a lot. It can also be a trap, though. I don't know if you guys talked about that, but I mean, you can get in that cycle where it be a trap, and it could be... Uh, where you're not it could having, be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. But you're not, you're not having, you're not having to know. manage. Well, you're not having that, to have I look at it I'm myself. Like I tell you this. Let me tell you this. Right now, there are a lot of those people that are in corporates looking at my daily schedule on my life. And they're like, shoot, I don't want to be like that. You know? <laughs> And I can tell you, I can guarantee you, like, they're like, dude, I don't care how much money you're making. You're going nuts sometimes, yeah. like, you know, with the patience and the flow and traveling and things. So I think in on average, on a lot of them do want to do their thing. However, it's coming down to ultimately. That's interesting. Walmart dentistry like how are you going to try to compete because the more you think about it the harder it gets the older you get the harder it gets the more kids you're going to have the harder it gets so like there's a lot of things demographically also speaking to where I don't think I think corporate dentistry there's nothing wrong with it except if you can control the quality that you give out even in that corporate entrepreneurship well, is hard is what you're saying Right. It is very but it's that's my, that's and it's not my, for everybody. It's not it's for not the faint of heart. See, but see, that's where I totally disagree because what I say, and this is my new thing is, is cause I used to be like, okay, everybody should own. Well, now my new thing is everybody should own. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the owner. Now, what I mean by that is like put people around you mm -hmm. that are, that can help you be successful, but are not necessarily making you have to carry the burden of office manager, dentist, owner, business person. You know, you know, obviously office, have been whatever. watching our stuff. Yeah, Bill. Is that, that gummit? You been but, but that's my thing, right? And, and because it's because because yeah. my thing, and, and again, it goes back to you know, I talked to a, I was just talking to a guy who's who's actually about to buy a bunch of dental practices in North Carolina because it's one of those states where you don't have to be a dentist to own practices. And so he's a big business entrepreneur guy, and he's wanting to get in. And he's talking to him, and he was talking about you know what he was going to pay his first year students, and he was like 120, 130 grand, or that's what he was going to pay him annually. And I was like, well, you won't be able to keep doctors, and he goes. 
his his words were, I don't care, right? Because the problem is, is it may be 50% that start to become corporate offices, but it's only going to be a, it, I think we're going to see a lot of churning in that. Now, then the question becomes is, is that sustainable to the corporate? At what point does care become compromised enough to where the public then chooses, they choose, you know, their dentist over value? Because what we see is as we drop insurances and, and move towards more of a fee-for-service model, we see patients go and then come back. You know, because they go and experience, okay, this is what this is what insurance driven government, corporate, whatever you want right. you know, dentistry looks like. That's mm-hmm. not what I want. I want what I had before and I'm willing to pay more for it now. So I can tell you right point, now, if you if you, you if you if you think about what you just said. In every single industry, that has been repeated over and over mm-hmm. and over sure. again it's value, because man. it's about value. And, and, as, and the, the trick is, though, at what point does the patient understand the difference in value? And when they do, they're willing to pay for it, right? Um, you've seen it happen in retail markets. You've seen it happen in pharmaceuticals. But that totally bucks the system because Completely. most of the most of the medical guys out there are not going that route. Um, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, and, and frankly, it's uh, you know, it's 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 where we have have totally thrown our stake in the ground. Well, I and mean, here's the hard part with this too. If you look at you know, if you were to pull okay, um, a hundred dentists, and you say what is the most important CE that you want to take in the next year, you know, I guarantee you it will be less than twenty five percent that says something on communication, um, leadership, business, sales, leadership, right. business, sales. Exactly. That's my big thing, young dentist, is like, you want to separate yourself? Mm-hmm. Like, I, it's selling dentistry. If you can't sell the value and create the value, you're going to suck. I don't care if you're the best dentist in the freaking country. And so that's my big thing, too, is like, if you're, some people are more talented than not, right? Some people are more gifted than just naturally. So if not, if you're not, go learn how to communicate. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my soapbox. <laughs> and that yeah, is true. I just, no, I just, but I mean, why is that funny. that more guys don't get that? Because because don't they know. don't they're not used to hearing. They think that they went to school and they learned how to fix teeth, and that's what they learned. That's it. They think that's it. But they don't know the fixing teeth was just the icing on the cake. Listen, I can't tell you for, from an old guy like me. It is so refreshing to see you guys that are that's young. That's what I told. I told Sean. Great I like, ideas. You got, you got to check these guys out, man. They'll fire you up. <laughs> and you guys understand that. You know, that, that, that what has been said over and over again since the beginning of time is totally true. Um, what you do in your business is, is not how you're going to be successful at business. There's working in your business and there's working on your business, and you have to do both. But if you're only working in your business, at some point you're going to run out of stuff to do. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right? And so as an entrepreneur, you got to put an equal focus, if not more, Right out of school and beyond, because you spent all this time learning the clinical aspects, and you're still getting your speed. But, but you got to put a focus on, and you got to be okay in your own head that sales is not evil. Learning yeah. to influence—that uh, is such a refreshing conversation. I got to tell you, I've been doing this for 21 years, and 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 even like, <laughs> even like 10 years ago, if I used the word sales in front of a room, like they just like. Like they wouldn't even hear what I was saying because yeah, I used yeah. the S word and everything after that fell flat, you know? Um, but it's refreshing to see that it's changing. You guys are bringing, as you said, working smarter, uh, playing harder. That's the way we say it. You guys say <laughs> not harder. Um, that's, that's very cool. What is it? What is it you guys have on the horizon? Well, I got something exciting. We're going to share this here in a few weeks. We're doing, um, we're planning on doing. Uh, oh, so is this the announcement? Is this the pre-announcement? Oh, we are, oh, no, no, we're, we're, world premiere, June first. <laughs> but we're gonna have a new conference. We're throwing our own dental conference. We got sick and tired of some of these conferences that have been doing the same thing over oh. and over, and we thought enough is enough, and let's do something young and progressive. And we're gonna be podcasting. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna be doing live stuff. So I'm excited. That's for me. And um, our podcast that we're going to do that in LA. Well, share what it is. Oh, yeah. It's called the Dental Influencers Alliance. So pretty much it's... The DIA. Um, 
DIA. DIA. So yeah, we, we thought of, okay, so instead of trying to go and beg all these dentists and young dentists out of school, like, hey, come to the CE, come to this or go to that. Why don't we just throw it out there and get all these popular influencers online, like our speakers. Instagram that have, Nation. Instagram Nation. What are some of these people? Because a lot of these the speakers that we collected, they're always speaking all these places and schools. And we're like, why not throw a conference that is more of uh, not just be with a tie and show your before and after and just leave the stage instead let's just see how real are these people and influence them like influence the younger folks so none of the speakers is funny because we don't pay any of the speakers that are going to be there they're all wanting to come because of how the impact they're going to make to the younger dentist and this is going to be this year in california so um it, we're excited because this is a little bit different than just coming again coming and showing your symposium like this is my before this is my after here's the contact of my courses if you want to come learn like that is not influencing you're not being a role model you're just showing and marketing for your courses so that's what i kind of turned me not me but because i still go to those courses a lot of younger folks are like i don't go to ce because everybody they don't show me anything they don't teach me anything and you know what i can get on youtube payment and i watch and i learn so much more than any of these C's that are gone to these feel apps. like we're trying to do something different where it is hey let's give content let's give free tips let's get people enrolled excited and then the money will come the marketing will come now it's funny because we are sold out the sponsor list and we have seven eight companies are asking us for, to pay us to be a sponsor awesome. and we were sold out because we didn't think it's going to have that much of a turnaround we just put 100 tickets and they were sold out out of eight nine hours we still have 200 tickets that we're going to sell out but it's that just shows you the online world of what's happening with the dentist and not going to ce because they're on their phone and they'd rather be on their phone instead of going and traveling to courses. So I'm excited to it's be cool. doing that. It's very cool. With Soli and, and awesome. four or five when other guys. That, when does that take place? It's DIA happening December 7th and 8th, uh, December in uh, LA, Double Tree Hotel. The Double Tree in LA. Double Tree in LA, yeah. We're going to start. It's the talking. finest Double Tree. <laughs> LA, it's the nicest Double Tree. Ever party. Seen. Yeah, it's going to be photography courses. They're going to be 3D printing courses. They're actually going to be business classes awesome. and some strategies for a millennial generation. So, Galen and them, they're going to talk business of cool. how they built That's their cool. own. Yeah, I mean, same kind of thing. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, the big thing for us, I think, is trying to just continue to push people to think bigger. Um, you know, it's so crazy when, when I graduated, I never thought I would be able, we would do what we did, we've done as a practice. You know, now you start to realize that like your, your mind is your own limiting factor. Um, I mean, to, I think that now I'm like, gosh, we're a, a two doctor PPO practice and $4 million isn't insane to think about. I mean, it really isn't. And so you start to think, okay, if you can, if you can build in efficiencies, it's like $4 million is year. not insane as a single doctor practice. I mean, no, you're right. I mean, that's you know. the thing, right? I mean, you start to realize like, I mean, this year I want to, I'm going to work 150 days and we're going to do great. You know, it's like, why not go to hundred days? You know, at some point, what you want to do is, is you can do it. But it's all right here. Um, it is exactly. What is holding so you back, right? And you know, that's and the big thing. It's, and it's, it's lifestyle. Just it. It's lifestyle by design, like Matt Monero says. It's lifestyle by design. It's whatever you lifestyle want. Lifestyle by design. It that's a good one. I'm it, gonna steal that one. By the way, it doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> so you know, my big thing that I'm continuing to carry too is the, is the sleep torch. You know, I want I want more and more people to be treating sleep and talking about sleep, and and so that's somewhat of my mission right now. At the end of the day, it's all about a systematic approach with your team involved learning how to create value so that the patient can see value if you can if i can ask you guys one question <laughs> sure if you want we're so glad y'all joined us on the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you guys joined if you just walked into it any dental office and i'm talking general it doesn't have to be corporate or any any dental offices and you could give them one advice on to case acceptance team approach one advice that you would give the, the, on an average any offices that you go that you think this one advice will work to for them to be able to have a better case acceptance we'll is, give two answers we'll give two answers you give, you give one answer and i'll give one answer right, okay yes deal yes all right so my first so answer, you want to know the number one thing we see is what you're asking that that kind of is across the board 
Well, that's what you're saying, right? He's, saying, he's saying one tip that they could do that yeah. would impact. One tip is something you're leaving the office and you're like, okay, this is, uh, if you get anything from my presentation today, this is the only thing I want okay, to do. So I'm going to say something. He's probably going to say something totally different. What I would say is uh, present the financial arrangement, chair side, and lead with payments every time. Ooh, I love that. Dennis talking payments. Mm. No, not a doctor. Not a doctor. No. Okay. Present the financial arrangement, chair side. Well, so what I'm saying is you bring your, your financial coordinator chair side, hand off chair side, get out of the room. It's the financial coordinator and the patient, and we lead him with payment plan option. So That's like what. I'm doing that, for example, just to make it easier for uh, like as an example, I just talked about $30,000 case. I told them all the steps and clinically and everything. Yeah, but and you I'm didn't talk like, money. You didn't say anything about money. No. No, but I will get my assistant who is my financial coordinator and then tell them this is what's going to happen. And then you talk about money. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is. What Cameron is yeah. saying essentially is make sure that the sale takes place before the financial arrangement. And when the financial arrangement comes in, it's only the financial, leave with the money, close we're not, it up. We're not talking about treatment uh, anymore. Don't present a buffet. I got you. No, I found I found out. Okay, yeah, that makes sense now. So if I had to say just, just one, you gotta pick just one. I know, just one big thing. This is it, doctor. No matter who you are, have to redefine what a di what a an examination like is. And you guys said this earlier. An examination is not simply a look in the mouth to see what's going on clinically. That's a piece of it. A full examination is what is it that's most important to the heart and the mind that's oh, attached that's to the smart. mind? That's a good one. And when you get that, now you're ready for the diagnosis. And by the way, you only have one diagnosis if you do that. And I run into this all the time where doctors say, you know, I'm, Clinically, I'm not aggressive way or, way. or I'm very aggressive. That's missing the whole point. It's not about you, doctor. If you're having to be less aggressive or more aggressive, you're missing the boat. What that tells you is you don't know what's going on in the heart or the mind. Therefore, you're not ready for a diagnosis. Yeah. All you know is what's happening clinically. Uh, now you got to back up and find out what's going on with the heart and the mind. It's one diagnosis. But seriously, guys, um, I think we got to get back together. I, I appreciate what you guys were, were saying to Ironis in terms of some of the things you were talking about in terms of the associateship and the lessons that you've learned and what you're bringing to the table. You know, payment your situation from the corporate scenario and what you're doing with the implants, man, is, is very, very cool. Um, I appreciate what you guys are doing with the Millennial Dentist Podcast. You guys get it. You got a lot of great things going on. I, I very much appreciate you sharing. I mean, it's uh, true. Both audience. of us, we, we all, we both have this same exact respect for the older and the seasoned dentist because for his case, I mean, having his dad and also for mine, having a lot of mentors going to these CEs. I mean, every time I go, not just the CE that I go, but I always want to be making a good solid relationship with the, with the practice uh, professor, uh, professor. So it's the same thing. I've had a lot of mentors and everybody who asks us, we get a lot of questions. We always tell them to seek mentors because if we learn everything I do is learning from the seasoned dentist and no matter how bad we talk about them or good, I mean, I love them to death, but sometimes it's at the end of the day, um, I, I feel like we owe them that respect that uh, we wouldn't point. have, we wouldn't have what we have if it wasn't for them. So, and at the end of the day, I mean, everybody needs a coach in life, you know, everybody yeah. needs a coach no matter where you are. Um, and that's it. Guys, I appreciate very much your heart. I, I, I appreciate you running all the way over here. Payment. Yeah. And, uh, I, didn't get into, yeah. I didn't get into anything, but no, it's good. I, thank, thank you, guys. We'll do this yeah, again. We'll you. get together. Casey will clean all this up and make it look like we knew you know, what we were doing. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we'll get back together. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for joining us. And this has been the Dental Profits podcast series off the rails tonight. <laughs> where it's all about you having happier clients, better results, making more money, and enjoying the ride. See you next time.